Over the last 10 years, an international industry has grown up providing state intelligence agencies with mass surveillance equipment. Those industries are now exporting that equipment around the world in an uncontrolled manner. We have discovered around 160 companies as part of that consortium of interests. The, the companies concerned, in order to sell this high-tech surveillance equipment to governments, need to show them what their equipment is capable of. So they have, just like regular industry, prospectus, which details how many people can be spied upon, whether it's mobile phones or taps uh, in, into your computer directly, um, whether it's automatic language detection devices, uh, eye detection devices, and so on. And so we have obtained all that information and we're presenting it publicly. We're all aware of the traditional spy stories of an organisation like MI6 tracking down someone else from a competing spy agency or bugging the phone of one or two people. In the last 10 years, something else has happened. We now see mass surveillance, where computer systems of an entire country or an entire group within a country are infected by surveillance uh, programs automatically at border gateways, where the entire telephone calls of a nation can be and are uh, permanently recorded um, as a result of surveillance equipment sold like by firms like Vastec uh, from South Africa. This is something new. Previously, we had all thought, well, why would the government be interested in me? Why would the government be interested in my brother? My business is not interesting. I'm not a criminal. Now we have a situation where these companies sell to state intelligence organizations the ability to spy on the entire population at once. That is called strategic interception. Take all telecommunications traffic out of a country and permanently record it. And then in five or six years time, if your brother or someone close to you becomes of interest to that company or to uh, the government that it's working for, they can go backwards in time and look to see what you said or what you emailed uh, six years ago. So that's a, a, a really quite extraordinary difference uh, compared to what we thought the world was about. We are in a world now where not only is it theoretically possible to record nearly all telecommunications traffic out of a country, including all telephone calls, uh, but where there is an international industry selling the devices to do it. So, for example, some firms are selling to states secretly equipment to record everyone's mobile telephone location to within 50 metres for an entire city uh, and keep that information permanently. Um, they are selling Trojans, so you go to some website or someone sends you an email and it, bang, infects your phone with a Trojan that then records uh, the, what you're saying in the room, even when the phone um, doesn't appear to be active. Uh, similarly, uh, if you run iTunes, iTunes has a floor in it, and that floor is automatically used by some of these companies to take over whatever computer system uh, is running iTunes. And there are, uh, are these sorts of back doors into every popular phone, every popular computer, every popular computer program. Uh, hundreds and hundreds of different sorts of systems uh, that, are, that, are, that are covered. So if, if jour journalists come to me for advice and they say, what can I use uh, to stop myself being permanently recorded in secret archives? Um, my answer is actually it's extremely difficult. It is not easy to do because cyberspace is primarily a civilian space where we put the intimate details of our lives. Um, we now have a militarization of civilian life. So this is sort of the equivalent of having you know, a tank in your lounge room because what you do in your lounge room with your telephone, uh, updating your Facebook page or speaking to your friends, is being monitored by very sophisticated national security equipment for everyone, even if they are just a civilian. So every civilian 
is now a target of military intelligence activity. Everyone. WikiLeaks and its people have been the subject of surveillance for years. And some of that information has come out as a result of legal processes in the United States. But that should be of no surprise to anyone. Of course, WikiLeaks is surveilled. What is new here is that everyone else is surveilled as well. You know, when we first spoke about some of these findings um, of bulk whole country surveillance, uh, it seemed as if that was saying that aliens had landed, you know, that, that all telephone calls um, from particular countries are permanently recorded. That seems like it's something that's fa fanciful. But actually, computer power has increased now to the degree that that is only not done but there are commercial firms that do that en masse and go around the world trying to sell their products. As a result of this release, I hope that everyone understands how they are all being spied upon. Not that this is some theoretical threat that perhaps might happen to one person one day, but actually is happening to everyone right now. Uh, as a result of understanding that, Perhaps there will be democratic pressure that will uh, result in export regulation so that Western companies can't sell mass surveillance equipment to regimes that abuse human rights. But it's more than just about good Western countries exporting to bad developing world countries. It's a lot more than that. Western companies are also selling to Western intelligence agencies who operate in secret and therefore operate corruptly. Uh, so it is necessary not just to rely on the government to increase its own regulation and increase the regulation of those companies that are close to the government. Rather, as individuals, uh, we must adopt various forms of encryption technology and privacy protecting technology and understand what the various privacy risks are uh, for us. And if we do not do that, um, Western democracy runs the risk uh, that we'll end up in an Orwellian uh, totalitarian surveillance state. Now, that, of course, it sounds bombastic every time you mention the word totalitarian, but that's literally what the surveillance situation we are in. It is total surveillance. As we move our lives onto the internet, we move our communications with our relatives, uh, with our workplace, we store our diaries on the internet, our telephone calls uh, are monitored at border gateways and so on. There is little left of democratic life that is not surveilled. But it is not, it is not being surveilled equally. It is not the public that is surveilling big corporations, secretive government agencies and the rest of the public. Rather there is a disproportionate flow of information from us, from the public, into organisations that are already very powerful. And that permits the elite, the surveillance elite, the national security elite of a country to lift off from its people, to disconnect from its people, to predict its people. And that's a dangerous situation. And what we're dealing with here is not merely the surveillance elite of one country operating alone, but rather an international surveillance elite, uh, transnational companies selling these products all over the world, and then intelligence agencies swapping uh, data that they collect with each other. That's a, um, that's a worrying situation for Western democracy. So